Thank you for joining us again for Adan Factoids. We got a question from a diver about vertigo or spinning, a very specific type of spinning. But what made this unique was that the spinning occurred the next day after diving. And they were asking what the possible causes were. Now, firstly, I just want to differentiate spinning, which is literally feeling as if you are rotating or as if the room is turning around you. It could be this way or that way versus just a general sense of unsteadiness or dizziness. So here we're talking about real spinning or vertigo. Now there are not that many causes of vertigo and I'm going to list them initially as they might occur during a dive and then we'll zoom in on the specific question. First of all, as we descend and the pressure increases on our middle ear or tympanic membrane, if rupture occurs, cold water can rush in, it stimulates part of the inner ear and that can cause a temporary bout of vertigo. Now that's usually characterized by pain that's suddenly relieved and then vertigo that starts within a couple of seconds but then stops again within about a minute or two. So that's the classic middle ear barotrauma related vertigo. If various forceful attempts at trying to equalize the ear result in vertigo and the vertigo persists or even gets worse during the dive, then there's a possibility of inner ear barotrauma. Not middle ear, not tympanic membrane now, but inner ear barotrauma. And this is far more serious and definitely needs medical attention after the dive. Apart from that, when uh, remaining at the bottom, of course, in the course of diving itself, being on different breathing gases or going to different depths where nitrogen narcosis may be relevant, can cause vertigo in and of itself. So uh, vertigo or dizziness that occurs at depth should always be suspected as being the result of maybe the gas mixture or the wrong gas mixture. Then as you return to the surface, it's likely to experience vertigo as a result of the pressure difference as the pressure in the middle ear is relieved through the eustachian tube. Remember, you've equalized on the way down, but now that same gas needs to escape on its way back to the surface. And when that occurs, you may experience what is called alternobaric vertigo or pressure difference vertigo. That is characterized by a very short lasting, less than 10 minutes typical vertigo, and it is alleviated as soon as the pressure difference clears. So usually the person would maybe be at the shot line, experience that during their stops, but when they're on the boat and they click or sort of flick their ears or equalize once or twice, then it's completely gone and there are no other symptoms. If the vertigo persists, however, then one should suspect possible even decompression illness as a result of the ascent. And then finally, if one has vertigo that develops, let's say, the next day after diving, in, under completely unrelated circumstances to diving itself, it may be the result of a so-called delayed rupture of the uh, inner ear membrane structures. And what would typically happen is someone would be uh, straining or pick, uh, pick uh, something up that is heavy and or stumble and in the process suddenly have onset of vertigo. What has happened is that the previous day's diving really stretched the round window to a certain extent and uh, tore some of its uh, fibers but then with that last strain the next day there can be rapid onset of a rupture of the oval window, mostly the round window though, and onset of severe vertigo. The last type of vertigo that I would like to mention, and this is what is most likely in the case that was described, is if one suffered or struggled to equalize the previous day and your ear doesn't feel very well and the next day you wake up and you have 
vertigo in that ear or persistence of a sense of dizziness and there may even be some blood on the pillow uh, on that side that you've been lying or the ear that's affected that may actually be the sign of a middle ear infection that is starting to affect the inner ear in other words you've got a middle ear barotitis pressure damage related to the middle ear now starting to involve the inner ear the bottom line is any of these conditions justify medical uh, examination a simple look in by um, an experienced uh, physician with an otoscope will be able to distinguish the type of barotrauma that is involved and then direct the individual to the right treatment so to summarize Again, one can have vertigo as a result of middle ear barotrauma that's going down with rupture. It's brief and it stops after a couple of minutes. You can have it as a result of the gas that you breathe at depth. You can have it going up as a result of alternobaric vertigo, pressure difference vertigo, which if it persists may be the result of decompression illness. And if it happens the next day, it may be the result of a delayed barotrauma of the inner ear with a rupture or fistula. And in certain cases, maybe the extension of an infection or inflammation of middle ear barotrauma that then starts involving the inner ear. And that's what we would say uh, in response to the question that uh, was posed by the diver. But we certainly would recommend that you see a diving physician or ENT and not go diving until this has been sorted out. Thank you for the fascinating question. We hope that the answer has been um, helpful to you. And please remember to show that you like these responses, you find them helpful, and feel free to comment and, of course, subscribe to our channel.